Aloy of the Nora. She who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Errand, tell her what you found. I, I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Osaron. A warlord named Durval. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Osaron had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliffe. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Osaron. But I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as well. Errant, Murad. Let me discuss it with her privately. I hate to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to me. It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes. But Ursa has a way of making her people see reason. So you see, I need her back at my side. And quickly. Who is Durval, exactly? To understand Durval, you must first understand my father. He truly thought of himself as a sun god. His mind was broken. He believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims, especially the Asaram. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrificed them in the Sun Ring. So why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? He felt she betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. And she came to me. Together, we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asaram who fought with us. He made so many powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. By all means. They call you a sun god who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. How much of that is true? It's not too far off. Well, I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. I <laughs> I like this king. This is a good king. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all, while men live in palaces? It might. Eventually. If people like you help me bring it about. Your politics seem very complicated. The Asaram are friends, but enemies too. Well, I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Asaram freebooters. Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Asaram clans in the claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation. Especially given the fact that my father raided the Asaram for years. Ursa helps keep the peace. Promising a future based on mutual gain.
but some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime, holding out at the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination, and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who says that? Well, Murad, for one. Don't hesitate to ask him or Erend if you have further questions. Alright, well, it was good meeting you, Sun King of Odd. Pretty cool, dude. Uh, you mind if I scan whatever that is right there? Uh, what the... What is this? Why can't I scan it? It's got a thing. Ah, founding a Meridian. A scribe's book of carefully copied glyphs. Ooh. Okay, this is gonna... Holy cow, this is gonna take a minute. Alright, well, here we go. The founding of Meridian. We are Karja, and us is the blood of those led by Araman from persecution and pursuit so long ago. Out of the far savage east we came, guardians of a treasure greater than land or metal, the leaves of the old ones. Araman found the leaves in a ruin, picked out by a beam of sunlight, and he recognized at once their importance. Within was etched the first teaching of, teachings of how to observe the sun, to recognize its guidance, and to understand the place of man. From out of the leaves came the first glyphs, the first writing, so our knowledge could last longer than voices. But when our forefathers offered to share this gift, they were driven out by those they had once called tribesfolk. These ones feared to have the light of knowledge brought to bear on their ignorance or were jealous of its power. And so began the long wandering of our people, trusting only that the sun would guide them and deliver them from the barbarian tribes. The path was hard and marked by the stones of families who fell along the wayside, even Aramon's own. The persecution was unceasing from those without purpose, only the desire to debase and destroy. But the faith of the Karja was rewarded with a distant vision, a tower like a solid ray of the sun holding onto the horizon, flashing. Even as their enemies descended upon them, Armin followed the flight of the Glint Hawks, leading his people through looming canyons and teeming jungles. Again, they saw the tower, so close now it seemed to reach the very sun itself, and they saw that the Glint Hawks perched upon it. Beheld in the light of the sun, the tower, the spire, cast its long shadow upon a mesa across the verdant valley. Armin knew he had found a haven for the tribe, as this was a place shunned by those without his faith, who cowered from the magnificence of the spire or the shining feathers of the Glint Hawks. He named this place Meridian, from a passage in the leaves, and the tribe, so the leaves is like their holy script. And the tribe settled in the protection of the Great Mesa. They found the site was blessed in every respect, carving their cliff houses from the bount bounteous resources, and in time from the red rock of the Mesa itself, crowning it with the first columns of the City of the Sun. Truly the sun gave much to the descendants of our forefathers, granting Meridian great harvests and prosperity, and the bounds of the sundom for as far as its light touched. In time, seeing Meridian shielded us from the dark arrows and plots of our foes, other foreigners brought trade and tribute. Holy Meridian, without spire and sun, there would be no Meridian, but now and forevermore it stands as monument to both, and the glory of our men and the founders is reflected anew in each sun king of the radiant line and the noble houses of the sun court. Holy cow, that was really long. I hope you don't mind that I just scanned your little book. See you later, sun king of Odd. it's been real. Hello there! Let me chat with you two. So, I thought Ursa was dead, and I thought Durval was dead. Dead doesn't seem to mean what it used to. Or maybe I'm just an ass. Whatever. All I know is that it's time to find my sister and get some payback. I hope Murad's guy grabs us the lead. Did Ursa ever tell you anything about Durval? Well, we were both under his command for a while, sort of. Helped him recruit an army to take out the mad Sun King. But then he got real creepy with Ursa. Needless to say, she wasn't interested, but he wouldn't let it go. Not to mention the fact that we realized he wanted to murder every Karja, not just the bad ones. Long story short, he's a grazer-licking dumbbag. Avad seems committed to finding your sister. Yeah, those two got along. And some people say they shacked up, but I, I don't buy it. Seems a little skinny for her. Oh, okay, some bad images are forming in my head. Let's just focus on finding her. And kicking Durval's ass. 
Uh, Aaron, you're cool, man. I like Aaron. Aaron and Avad, they're and and blameless. Uh, what's his name? Murad. They're all cool people. I'm liking these characters so far. I'd better go. Don't stand me up in Pitchcliff, okay? Ursa needs us. Yeah, I'll get over there eventually. Maybe not right after this. How's it going, Blameless Murad? Aloy, how can I be of service? It's obvious that you're an advisor to the Sun King, but what is it you do exactly? Whatever is needed, of course. Are you always so evasive? It depends. <laughs> Are you a spy? What kind of a question is that? You were right about Avad. He seems genuine. He is the Sun King. I serve him the best I can. What else would you have me say? Huh. Did you serve the last one as best you could, too? Well, I served him to his enemies. It was the best I could do for the Sundom. What did you do? Nothing I could be blamed for. Hence the term blameless. Sounds to me like you're a spy. There are many helpful voices in the Sundom and beyond. I like to think of myself as a good listener. So why do they call you Blameless Maraud? Well, it depends on who you mean by they, and what they might wish to blame me for. <sighs> Talking to you is tiring. So they say. <laughs> I like this guy. What will I find at the border? An outpost full of Osaram, most of whom want nothing to do with Durval. Still, he inspires great loyalty in those who fought with him against the last Sun King. He will not be caught alone. And don't forget, he is a master craftsman. Nothing delights him more than his dangerous toys. What makes you so sure Durval did this to Ursa? I don't care for sure or certain. I prefer likely or probably. How many Osirum are clever enough for this ruse? Capable of building the weapon you described, who hate Ursa so. More than one? Not likely. Durval? Quite probably. Even if people think he's dead? That is surely another reason to be suspicious of certain words. I have to go. Then you must. I like you. I like all these guys. What do we have right there? Is this another thing I have to read that's going to take me forever? The Sun Kings. Ah, oh, this is going to be... This is going to be... Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, man. Here we go. All right. The Chronicle of the Sun Kings. Today is a reading day for me. The founder, Araman, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the Savage East into the va into the fastness... Fastness? Wouldn't it be vastness? I don't know. Of the Mesa Valley, and who, reading the signs of sun and shadow both, delivered them to the site of Holy Meridian. How much? Oh, I still got like half an hour. We got plenty of time. The bounteous Amavad, who over... Oh, so it's just each paragraph is dedicated to another Sun King. It's going to go from Armin all the way to either the Mad Sun King or Avad. Okay. that's That shouldn't take too long, hopefully. The bounteous Amavad, who oversaw the clearing and sowing of the royal maze land so that none who walked in the sun's favor should go hungry again, who cut back the jewel to claim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the Sun Court. The far-seeing Sadahin? I'm going to mispronounce some of these pretty badly. Who expanded the sun's dominion to the north, south, and east, setting a gate at Bright Market Harbor, and who, before the sun at its highest proclaimed these lands, would be known as the Karja Sundom, so by the light it was good. Generous Juwadon, who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts, and who allowed trade from north and south, even, even permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs so they might understand more than simple barter. Zavrad, the Pilgrim Sun King, whose tower was raised to the top of the Ridge of Vales and who crossed the great waters of the Daybreak, so the Sundom might extend ever further, and to honor this passage had the great blazon arch raised on the far shores. Bold Eriv, who saw the suns passing into the west as a challenge, and forged after it with a great army to be pushed back three times at the great canyon lands that would be known as the Daunt, until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and were vanished in the lands beyond. Prudent Basadid, is that Basadid? Yeah, sounds right. Or is that an O at the end? Basadio? I'm not sure. Uh, who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly, who ordered the construction of the Fortress of Sunfall and the garrison at Blages and Arch, declaring the land beyond it the Forbidden West where only the sun may go. Kuvadin, the Returner, 
who strove to bring civilization to the savage east, but returned, af returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying it was no longer fit for the people of the sun, and called for the building of great towers and walls so this wild land might be observed safely. Ranon, the Firebird, who saw the Sundom suffer unprovoked attack by the Ten Tenokth Horde, maybe? And who, against the protests of his advisor to com uh, advisors, accompanied his army to confront them. Under the sun, he claimed victory, though he was so greatly scarred he wore his blazoned helmet from that day. What a what a guy. Uh, Nahasis, who was a hunter as much as a sun king, and called for the proudest men of the noble houses to prove themselves in competition beneath the sun, and that those who felled the greatest machines would be situated as the first sun hawk and hawks of the hunter's lodge. The illuminated Marzid, who the sun visited with visions so vivid and grand, he commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Meridian, and for his summer palace in Sunfall had the great citadel raised, where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. Hivis, the elder brother of Marzid, who decreed each family with a suitable male child- wait, the elder brother? But Marzid was the Sun King? Sounds like an Ozai Iroh situation. Who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child in service of the Sun Kingdom's then depleted ranks, and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with the very finest armor, Halberd Enbo. Dran, who in his early years was a strong Sun King, defending the Sundom from the encroachment of other tribes and the derangement of the mas machines, but who became greatly addled and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatening to bring a twilight time upon us. And then Avad, the Liberator. So Duran was the mad Sun King. All right. All right then, very good. So go to Pitch Cliff, that's really far off. Is it, uh, it is, I hate it when the map doesn't load in properly, there we go. It is way up in the one area I have not yet gotten a tall neck for. So we are definitely not going to be going there next because I wanna hold off on that. I do need one more skill point to be able to get a level up. Okay, so what other options? Pitch Cliff is the main mission right now. We haven't gone to save, uh... Oh, we haven't gone to Maker's End. That's... Uh, okay, so wait. No, that was the active quest. It is one of the main missions, though, but we also have Maker's End. Where is that located at? Whoa, it is way up to the left. Okay. Also got a level 27 corrupted zone near it. What is this? Is this a... Does this mark a, um... Outpost that I need to take back, maybe? That little skull and crossbone? Okay, so those are the two main missions we have right now. Uh, search for the Banuk camp. That's really far off. I didn't mean to select that as my mission. Aaron's collateral. Uh, Olin's family. I do want to save Olin's family. We still have to get that snap mall lens. Complete three trials. Okay, okay. So those are all the missions we have right now. I want to go save Olin's family. Where is that, though? Way over there. That's actually back near... Uh, it's not too far from that cauldron we need to do. So actually, let's first let's find a uh, merchant in Meridian that we can buy some fast travel packs from. And then after we do that, can we see Avad from over here? Yeah, we can. He's right up there. What's up, Avad? See you around, dude. Spin real. I'll uh, go save your girlfriend and be right back. Don't worry. Go ahead and craft some stuff up really fast as we run here. Do, do, do. Max that, max that, may as well max this. What's the difference between blast and fire? You'd think they'd be the same thing, but what do I know? Alright, so let's find a merchant really fast that will hopefully sell me some fast travel packs. I will also go and steal whatever is in this little loot box mine. Thank you, very good. I should probably open up some of the treasure boxes, because yeah, we have a ton of them. Holy cow. Let's open some of these. Just so we don't have as many. And hopefully, I'll be honest, I'm hoping that one of them, for some reason, has a, uh... Like, that one had rich meat, and I think one of them just gave me a fast travel pack. I'm pressing X too fast. Yeah, some of them have fast travel packs, so I don't need to find a person to buy them from. Good. I was hoping some of them would have, like, boar skin. To be honest with you, that's what I was really hoping for. I'm going to go ahead and get a handful of these out of here. Let's go until we get to that next green one. Come on, boar skin. Boar skin would probably have to be in a rare one. Health boost potion I have maxed out on. I go ahead and like get rid of all the non-green ones. Okay, and I'll save the rest of these for later. I don't want to open all of them right now. All right. 
Got all that done. Very good. So now with all these new fast travel packs, let's fast travel as close to this as we can. Oh, I haven't been over here. All these campfires are grayed out. If the closest one I have is right there, I think I'd honestly rather just not even fast travel. I think I'd rather go by foot. Yeah. Let's just go by foot then. It's going to be a bit of a run. Hopefully we can find... Uh, I want one of two things to happen. I want us to really quickly run into a machine, a mountable machine that I can override, or I want us to run into a bunch of medicine pouches. Either or. Do I need to? It wants me to take the elevator. Okay. Come to me, elevator. But that is now the goal for this session. I want to, because uh, we got about 20-ish minutes left, I want to go help Olin save his family. I did pull that lever, didn't I? Is it, uh, is it on his way? Slowly but surely? I think I hear it moving. Hello? This is a really long elevator. Any day now? Is it, did I pull the lever? I could have sworn, oh, there it is. It just took it 78 years. Took you long enough, thanks. Down we go. 